What's up guys, Justin here with the Rhino Essentials. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about several different ways to create copies of objects inside of Rhino. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so there's a lot of different ways to create copies of objects inside of Rhino, and a lot of the way that this works is going to depend on what you're trying to do. So the simplest way to create a copy is like you do in pretty much any program. You can just do a copy paste, right? So you can just do a control C on your keyboard and then a control V on your keyboard. Notice how we got the command up here for copy to clipboard and then a command for paste. And notice how if I move this, there was an object created on top of this other object over here. So we created a copy just like this. However, you're not gonna use this too often, um, partially because it just drops that object right in the same location as the other one. And there's some more precise ways to do that. So one of the ways to do that is you can select an object and I'm gonna turn the gumball off for a second and then we can turn it back on. But right now in Rhino, if you click and drag something, right? So if I click and drag it like this, um, it's just going to move the object. However, if you tap the Alt key, on your keyboard, notice how that's gonna give you a little plus button in your viewport, right? You can see it by my cursor. What that's going to do is that's gonna put you in kind of like a copy mode. What that means is that means the object that you were moving is now going to be copied, just like this. So by tapping that Alt key, you can toggle on duplicate mode. So in addition, we can also do that using the gumball. So if I turn on the gumball, which I made a video about that yesterday, um, which we can link to in the notes down below. But if I was to do a shift click and select all of these objects and then click and drag like this, the same thing is going to work with the gumball tool. So if I tap the alt key while I'm clicking and dragging, that's gonna put me in copy mode or duplicate mode. So it's going to create a duplicate of these objects right here. So you can use this in order to quickly create both individual as well as multiple copies of objects inside of Rhino. And so sometimes you just wanna copy parts and pieces of objects in Rhino, right? So these are closed solid objects. Well, let's say we wanted to take some of the edges out of this or the surfaces. Well, there's a tool set in here for duplicating parts of models. You can find it by tapping DUP on your keyboard like this. Notice how that's gonna give me options for a lot of these different duplication styles. So for example, if I was to select duplicate border right here, it's going to ask me to select surfaces or poly surfaces or really whatever I want um, in order to duplicate. So if I was to click on this object right here. And you wanna do a control shift in order to get the individual objects right here. But if I do a control shift, I can select these individual faces. Notice how it's telling me to select those objects and then when I'm done, to hit the enter key. Well, when I do that, what that's gonna do is that's going to duplicate the border of those surfaces that we selected. So we can use that to duplicate the surfaces. You can also type in DUP and look for duplicate edge right here. So if we select duplicate edge, what that's gonna do is that's going to ask me to select edges. And notice how with the edges, it's going to tell me to just select the individual edges. I don't need to hold control and shift like I did before. But now if I hit the enter key, what that's gonna do is that's going to duplicate those edges on those objects. So you can use the duplicate functions in order to copy parts and pieces of objects in Rhino. And so now, let's say that we had a different shape in here. So I'm gonna add, let's add a truncated cone, or you know what, let's add a torus, that'll be fun. So I'm gonna add a torus, so I'm just gonna click in here in order to place it, I'll click again in order to give it thickness. And so now, let's say that I wanted to create multiple copies of an object, right? So I've got this object right here, and let's say I wanted to create maybe like a grid of these, so maybe like four and four. Well, what I can do is I can use the array functionality that we have inside of Rhino. So you can find the array functions by going into the transform tools right here. Notice how there's an option here for a rectangular array. So there's a couple other options which we can talk about as well. But for now, let's just talk about the rectangular array function. You can also type in array and hit the enter key. But now it's gonna ask me to select the objects that we want to array. In this case, I'm gonna select this one object and I'm gonna hit the enter key. Now, it's gonna ask me how many objects I want in the X direction the Y direction and the Z direction. And you can see the directions um, just by looking at the little axes in the corner here. But for example, in the X direction, I want four copies. So I'm gonna type in four and hit the enter key. In the Y direction, I want four copies. I'm gonna hit the enter key. I only want one in the Z direction because I don't want multiple different levels of objects. But then when I hit the enter key, 
Now it's gonna ask me for spacing, right? So what I can do is I can either type in a value or I can click and then move my mouse in order to set the spacing of those objects. So notice how, for example, I can move my mouse out and I can set this to set how closely or far, or far apart these objects are going to be, like this. And then when I click, notice how it's gonna give me another option to change these different things. So for example, if I was to click on X number or type in X, I could change the number of copies. So I could type in like a value of three. Notice how that changes the number of copies in that direction. I could do the same thing for the Y. So I could type in a different value. So let's say that one, I wanted six. And then I could also adjust my spacing. So I could set my spacing to be something like 20 feet and hit the enter key. And I could do the same thing on the Y. I could just type in 20 feet and hit the enter key. And then once I'm done, I can hit the enter key. That's going to create the array of objects that we had shown in here. So this is a quick, easy way to create a lot of different copies of objects. So in addition, there's also a tool in here for a polar array. So let's say that we had a different shape out here. But this time, let's say that we wanted to create a copy around an arc or a curve. Well, we could do that, or we could create multiple copies. Well, what we could do is we can select the option for polar array. It's gonna ask us to select our objects right here. So I'm gonna select this one. And then it's gonna ask me for the center of my polar array. So you may wanna use like a top-down view on this one. That's gonna allow you to be a little bit more precise, but let's say that we wanted the center point to be right here. So I'm gonna click then it's gonna ask me how many items I wanna create. In this case, I'm gonna say four, and I'm gonna hit the enter key. And then it's gonna have me set the radius along which these are going to be placed. So in this case, I'll move this out, maybe to something like this, and then I'll click. And then I can also set, if we want this to go all the way around the circle, or just partially around the circle. So in this case, I'm just gonna type in 360 and hit the enter key. And so notice what that's done is that's created four copies in here around that central point. However, if we want more copies, we can select this and let's say we wanted seven copies. I can just hit the enter key and that's gonna change that to seven. So you can also adjust the fill angle. So if you want these to go a little wider out, you can adjust that this way. Then we can also adjust, let's say that we only want this to go 270 degrees. I can click like this. And now this, these are only going 270 degrees. So the rotate function is going to set if these are going to rotate along with our turn. So notice how if I say yes, these are turning. If I say no, they're all facing the same direction right here. And then our Z offset is going to set if we want this to be offset up, right? So we could come in here and I could click, and I could click again to create a point. And what that's going to do is that's gonna create more of a spiral in here. So, and we can type in different values, right? So if I type in a value of like five, that's gonna give me a slightly less pronounced result, but you can see how that's gonna take each one of these up five um, as they step along the curve. And then once you're done, you can hit the enter key in order to create your array. So there's also a function if you wanna create copies along a curve. So notice how if you click in here, there's a couple other options in here. Well, in this case, we're gonna select the option for array long curve, and what it's gonna ask us for is it's gonna ask us for the object that we want to array. So in this case, I'm gonna use this box, and then I'm gonna hit the enter key. Well then, it's gonna ask me to set my curve. So in this case, it's just gonna be this curve right here. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna create copies along the curve. And so you can adjust different things in here like the number of items. So let's say I wanted more items, I could type in a value of 24. You could also set the distance and so notice how if you set a distance, it's gonna change the number of items that are in here because you can either set a number of items along a curve or you can set the spacing between the items. You can't set both because that wouldn't really make sense. You can't say that I want 17 objects, but I want the distance between them to be six. Like that's not gonna work, right? And then also you can adjust the option right here, and let's see if we have a top-down view. That might help us a little bit. So if you adjust the orientation in here, then you can set if the objects have no rotation. So if we click on no rotation, that's just gonna place these with the same orientation all the way through. 
But then freeform and road-like are going to set your objects so that they're kind of placed along this surface right here or along this curve right here. So that's actually going to rotate each one of them to try to align it with the curve that you have in here. But what you're, once you're done, you can hit that enter key in order to finalize your copies. All right, so there's also a function in here for creating copies along a surface. So you can use the array on surface function in order to do this. So what's going to happen is you're going to activate this tool. It's going to ask me for an object to array. In this case, I'm going to select this box right here and I'm going to hit the enter key. Then it's going to ask me for a base point for the array. That's going to be the point at which this object is placed. So in this case, I'm going to click on this corner right here. It's going to ask me for a reference normal. I'm just going to hit the enter key right now. And then it's going to ask me to select a target surface. And in this case, I'm going to click on this surface. Notice how it gives me some arrows in here to show me the direction along which the copies are going to be made. Well, in this case, what we can do is we can type in a number of elements. So in this case, I'm going to type in a value of four and hit the enter key. That means it's going to create four copies on the surface running this way. And then I'm going to put four running the other way. So now if I hit the enter key, what that's going to do is that's going to create an array of objects in here using that base point that we selected. And it's going to try to follow along with the normals or the direction of the surface. So this is a way that you can quickly place objects on surfaces in Rhino. All right. And then finally, we've got what's probably the simplest function in here for creating arrays. So there's a tool in here, right? Where we click in here, the last option is going to be a linear array. What that's going to do is that's going to ask me to select my objects. I'm going to hit the enter key. And then this time we can just set a number of objects. So we'll say five and we can set a reference point, right? So in this case, all we need to do is just to select a reference point and then a spacing. And it's just going to create these in a straight line. Right, so you can see how this is going to basically place these in a straight line from the object that we have selected in here. So now if I click, notice how it's creating those copies of objects in here. You do need to be a little bit careful to make sure that your reference point stays on the same plane because this is literally just going to create copies in a line away from whatever point you've created. But it's a fast, easy way to create those copies inside of Rhino. All right, so we can dive into some of these more in depth, but that's a quick overview of some ways you can create copies in Rhino. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions about any of these. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.